Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, we've only got him for about 15 minutes. Very busy. And so we're going to come in hot here directly to our first guest of the day. I'll tell you about the other guest the news we'll be covering after he leaves us in about 16 minutes. He is Congressman Ron Paul here to talk about uh, the economic implosion, uh, the, the depression that's developing on Main Street as the banks uh, worldwide are setting up a world monetary system. Congressman, thank you for joining us on this 17th uh, day of October. Nice to be with you again. You've got the floor, sir. Um, you're the expert on this. What are we facing right now? Well, it looks like it's all downhill from now on because uh, what Washington's doing is exactly wrong. They're supposed to uh, allow adjustments to come once they realize they've messed up the economy, but instead they're just doing more of the same. I saw an article this morning that tells you how desperate they are. Uh, it was on Reuters, and uh, a lot of this stuff is getting in the main street now and talking about how bad these things are. But this story said that they, the uh, amount that we'll inject here or have promises of over five trillion dollars and I was on CNN this morning and I told him I said you know if that could solve the problems I said we would never have to work again just print money but obviously it doesn't solve the problem and you know even if it temporarily helps the market or calms the markets or uh, increases the value of the dollar it's all temporary because Everything we've done for decades has been inflationary. Now, this is just excessive inflation uh, of the money supply, and this is going to be harmful to us. Uh, we, we need to go back to work again, and that's the part that people don't like. They think that the government can take care of us from cradle to grave, and that uh, we never have to worry. They always say government's going to take care of us, but they never ask, who's the government? There's, you know, there's a contest going on uh, between us who believe in freedom and hard work and savings and all, and those who think that uh, there is a free lunch. But uh, I think we're in transition now because our numbers are growing because the people who have uh, for so long believed the government could take care of them are starting to realize they can't trust the government. So to me, it's a bit of an opportunity for us to present our case, but it's going to be a tough struggle. Well, you've always talked about when the crisis of the central banking fractional reserve system came to a head, and you predicted in uh, Bastrop, Texas, four years ago that it would happen by 2007, 2008. You were right uh, that there would be a contest between those that want an all-powerful, uh, omnipresent, Soviet-style state, uh, you know, claiming that's the solution, more of what they brought us, versus true free market. And I see the media, uh, a lot of the media trying to claim capitalism or free market did this when that's not what it is, is it, Congressman? Yeah, and that's probably the most detrimental uh, thought that's floating around out there. But that's what happened in the Depression. That was the first initial uh, surge toward uh, socialism was they blamed the uh, collapse of the stock market in 29 and the depression on capitalism and the gold standard so that's when we embarked on on welfareism now the same thing is happening again and even you know when you hear the president he's, he keeps saying well i'm a free market person but free markets sometimes get into trouble and we have to bail them out we have to help them but whoever heard i, I keep asking where where did this notion come from that that freedom gets into trouble and you save freedom with socialism and dictatorial powers. I don't know why the American people buy into that. The people who philosophically are just uh, have their minds twisted is one thing, but others, you know, delight. And you know these people who delight in just gaining more power, whether it's power of the world, the natural resources, of the monetary system, or our own, our own system of government. They have no trust in the people. They just resent people individually making up their own mind, assuming responsibility for themselves, thinking that they can do a better job than God. Government. And yet yeah, we, um, we too often as a people accept this idea that there is a free lunch, but things are changing, and yet the opposition are laying their plans as well. That's why I fear the fact that they might come up with this idea of a one single world central bank. Well, that's exactly what they're now proposing. For decades, we've warned people that when this monetary crisis came from their fraudulent uh, crony system, that this would happen, and that is now being proposed. I have scores of mainstream articles in the last week where they're calling for globalization, standardization of currencies. We'll be right back with Congressman Ron Paul. 
All right, Ron Paul is our guest for about uh, seven, eight more minutes here today. Appreciate him joining us. Congressman, in the last segment, we were talking about calls for a new global financial order. Uh, you said they would do that about a month ago. Uh, they have called for that uh, in, in just scores of publications. Here's a headline, calls for new global financial order increase. Uh, we will all still have uh, our currency by name, but a private group of bankers uh, will actually set that uh, monetary uh, value. They're talking about a global carbon tax being a new fractional uh, bubble where we will buy our carbon taxes from the private banks. I mean, this is world government of and by the central banks. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, and they're doing it through the financial system. We call it socialism, and it is a form of socialism, but it's closer to fascism, you know, because big business and big government are, are partners in this deal. So it's a little bit different than the communism and Swedish socialism. But I think that this has been going on, and as you, as you, I'm sure, agree, it's been going on uh, for a long time. But well, I think what's really happening today is that the we're at the end stages of the monetary system that evolved out of the breakdown of Bretton Woods in 1971, and it's lasted an amazingly long period of time—37 years. That's that's pretty good for a total fiat currency. But it has to be revamped, and I uh, they're, they're talking about liquidity crises and uh, and tight credit here in this country and around the world. But uh, what they're not saying is that the dollar reserve standard is is done for, and they're just lining up now, see who the most powerful special interests are. Even though we talk about the, the special interests and the, the powerful influences, influential people, but I'm sure there's a contest going on there. Some win and some lose, and, and there are contests uh, between these groups. But, but they're lining them up, and the central banks have talked for a long time to each other. This is why I'm going to work harder next year, although I've had this before, is even though we can't get rid of the Fed in a day, we need to have more transparency. We need an audit of the Fed.